Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna once again back with another region. Today we're starting the head and neck. And with the head and neck, we will obviously begin with the skull because that is the major bone of your head and neck. Uh, along with the cervical vertebra, but that comes when we'll talk about the neck, right? So let's talk about this bone called the skull bone. Now the skull has different views, like it has this anterior part, it has this lateral part, all these parts are basically divided into normas, all right? So the we are going to study these normas sequence-wise. Today we're looking at the norma verticalis. So the norma verticalis is basically the superior aspect of the skull and the anterior view is the norma frontalis. Lateral view is the norma lateralis. Posterior view is the norma uh, occipitalis and the inferior view is the norma basalis. So these are the various views of the skull which is a very important bone and it is the bone that is protecting your brain, the most complex organ and the most uh, intellectual organ of your body. Let's begin talking with our first topic, which is the Norma Verticalis. Before we get started, uh, I request you all to subscribe to my channel as I make anatomy a piece of cake. Let's get on with the video. So here is the Norma Verticalis. You are viewing this uh, skull from the top. The first bone that you will encounter anteriorly is the upper part of your frontal bone. The frontal bone is like the front, you can say the front line bone. So it forms the frontal area, which is actually the forehead of your face. All right. Then we have posteriorly, we have this uppermost part of the what bone? Because it is lying posteriorly, it is known as the occipital bone of the skull. And uh, on either side, we have the two parietal bones. All right. The parietal bones are two in number that are seen in the norma verticalis. These bones are joined with uh, to each other with sutures or joints, you can call them. But sutures is a better word in case of skull because uh, your skull is completely articulated to each other. Like these joints do not produce any movements, right? So you can call them sutures, which is a better way of giving a label to these uh, areas where the various bones are meeting, all right? So the frontal bone meets the two parietal bones at this suture, which is known as the coronal suture. The coronal suture is running side from one side to the other side of the superior aspect of the skull which is right here the coronal suture and then we have this suture which is lying in the median plane between the two parietal bones it is known as the sagittal suture then we have the next suture which is uh, you can see here between the occipital bone and the two parietal bones this is known as the lambdoid suture now let's talk about some other important parts about the norma verticalis, some bony features or in, uh, important formants that you'll encounter. You can see another suture in the frontal bone where two frontal bones are meeting in midline. This is known as metopic suture. Uh, however, we're not studying this. Is, it's only present in 3 to 8% individuals, which is not a lot. Your coronal suture and the sagittal suture has this meeting point called the bregma. This meeting point between the two sutures is known as bregma. Why is bregma important? Bregma is important because when the baby is born, uh, at the very start of life, this uh, bregma area, it is not completely joined to each other. So you can see here, uh, this is, let's suppose the um, frontal bone. These are the two parietal bones. They are meeting here, but this is the bregma. You can see there is a gap in this area. Uh, these bones are not completely fused at this point. This is known as the anterior fontanelle. Or what is a fontanelle? It's basically a foramen or like an opening. All right. What is the importance of this anterior fontanelle, uh, which is also present po posteriorly, a posterior fontanelle at the point of meeting of the lambdoid suture with this sagittal suture known as a posterior fontanelle. The importance of this is that because it is open, so when the baby is being delivered vaginally, you can, uh, these bones can easily overlap each other so that, you know, there is, uh, the baby can easily pass through a small opening. Clinically, these fontanelles are important because they give signs of, uh, you know, what is wrong with the child. For instance, if there is a uh, swelling at this area, at the anterior fontanelle area, you know that the child is suffering from an increased ICP, increased intracranial pressure. Uh, so you can get that checked out uh, real quickly. And if the fontanelles are undergoing depression, if they're depressed rather than being swelled, then you know that the, uh, there is decreased ICP and you look into the causes of those, which is the most important cause in children is the dehydration. So you can estimate, you know, what is wrong with the child clinically uh, from these fontanelles. So these are clinically very important. So uh, when do these fontanelles close? Anterior fontanelle closes at 18 to 24 months of age. Posterior fontanelle closes earlier than that, which is like at 2 to 3 months of age. 
If the fontanelles were to close before their time of closing, close earlier than 18 to 24 months, in that case, the brain growth will be stunted in those children, resulting in the child to be less intelligent later on. Next uh, important uh, bony point in the skull is this part of the sagittal suture, which is the highest point of the cranial vault or roof of the skull, which is also known as the cranium. The highest point uh, in the sagittal suture is known as the vertex of the skull. On the both parietal bones, there are uh, some elevations. These are known as the parietal eminences. And another important thing is that uh, about four centimeter in front of the lambdoid suture, uh, on each parietal bone, you will find these two foramens. These are known as the parietal foramina. The importance of these is that they transmit the emissary veins from the scalp to the inside of your uh, sagittal sinus. Another important point is the obelion. It lies between the two um, parietal foramina on the sagittal suture. These are all the important points you needed to know for the Norma verticalis. I really hope you understood well. In the next video, we'll talk about the Norma frontalis. So stay tuned and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.